So here's the problem. You're in a nice triangular lattice garden. You have a bunch of particles that are sitting at vertices, maybe they're ants, and they're somehow connected and they want to compress. They want to gather together in some more compact conformation, um, which seems easy enough, but the trick is that each ant is acting individually. There's no puppeteer controlling this, and they only see locally. So each ant sees its immediate neighbors and sees, um, cannot see anything farther. So it wants to do this in a distributed, local way. It has very limited memory. So here's our algorithm. I don't expect you to read it. It basically just says each ant, you pick one randomly, which means it wakes up at a random time. It looks, it chooses a neighboring spot on the lattice. If it's empty, it has to be empty. Um, it goes there with probability, which is determined by some parameter lambda. So it goes there with probability lambda raised to the number of neighbors the, ver the ant would have in the new place minus the old place. Okay, very simple, and it stays connected. Okay, so if it was going to disconnect, it, it rejects the move. And if you run this, you get this kind of gathering, this kind of compression, where you start off with something which has a linear perimeter, and you end up with something which has a square root perimeter, which is close to the minimal possible perimeter. So that's great. If you choose lambda a little bit smaller, if you choose it to be two, you go 10 million, 20 million, and you keep going forever, this is never going to compress. Okay, so there's a difference. What we're able to show is that if lambda is less than 2.17, you do get this, um, sorry, you, you get expansion. You get something which provably has linear perimeter, and when it's greater than about three and a half, you get compression. And th what you're seeing here is an example of a phase transition like spontaneous magnetization. So this is actually very closely related to what's known as the icing model in statistical physics. And if you want to learn about it, I learned about it 30 years ago from an article that Barry Sipper wrote. <laughs> and what I'm showing you is an example of self-organization, which is individual particles looking myopically at the world and running some local algorithm, but collectively some macroscopic thing emerges. So for this talk, this is new work in progress, um, could we use self-organization to make interesting patterns? All right, so instead of the, the previous one, I'm hiding all the math, um, it's converging to something which is lambda to the number of nearest neighbors. It's proportional to that. And so when lambda is large, you get them closer together. What if we had lambda to the number of degree three vertices or degree four vertices? What if you just rewarded things if they had a certain degree? So we started playing around with this. This is what happens if you have your favoring degree four in the top, in both pictures here, we have 40% red vertices, and the remaining are blue, 60%. And we just ran an algorithm that runs this type of algorithm that I showed you previously. It's not for gathering, but it's more for making these patterns. And you could see that on the top, this sort of, it begins to look like an American flag, I think. But um, the top, you get these stripes emerging, and they don't always align. They could align in any direction, and here you see something misaligned. And if you run it longer, these big blobs start aligning. And I should say that this, uh, diamond that you're seeing, this rhombus, is just part of the triangular lattice with periodic boundary conditions. Okay, so we don't have boundaries, but that's all I'm showing you. So we get these very interesting pictures. This is an example of favoring degree two or degree three. So you're indifferent between two and three. And here you see on the top, if you have started with 20% red vertices and on the bottom is 40% red vertices, again, you see these, these images just emerging naturally. Here's sort of more interesting ones, I think. Degree three is very odd because mathematically there's something going on that's different than all the others. But you could see on the bottom, you're getting uh, this honeycomb lattice forming um, emerging. 
On the right, we have an asymmetric case. So on the right, I'm showing you two examples where um, red is reacting to red, but blue is not reacting to blue. And so you get different patterns. And what I think is more interesting is what I'm showing you here is the algorithm evolving as the number of red vertices is increasing. So what you're seeing here at 25% red, you're suddenly going to see a change happening. Okay, so there's a, a change locally, and when you hit 50%, you're going to see a change again. So it fills up and very predictably at these 25 and 50% marks, and now you see it beginning to turn to red. Mm -hmm. Here you see the honeycomb lattice emerging. So the last thing I'm going to leave you with is we went farther. This algorithm was so simple that I'm going to come back to my robots. We were able to implement it with robots that instead of having things move preferentially towards more neighbors, we had them move with less probability away from things with more neighbors, and we did that with magnets. And here you could see on the left, you have no compression. And on the right, the gathering, here, here is robots gathering. So these are my robot, robotic gardeners. And you have compression happening. And you have this with no CPU, no memory, no uh, control at all, because this is just an emergent behavior. So that's what I had to tell you. Thank you.